He won the US Open Championship three times, his last one at age 45 making him the oldest to ever win it. He won 20 times on the PGA Tour and then went on to become the most dominant player in Champions Tour history, winning an astonishing 45 times. He started playing golf at the age of four and has never had a golf lesson in his life. This is Off the Tee with Hale Irwin. Where do you even begin when given the opportunity to hang out with a golf legend like Hale Irwin? I'll tell you this right now, he's got one of the most impressive man caves a golf fan can imagine. My golf stuff, this was, this was initially called the shop. At one point, he's trying to find the putter he won the 1990 US Open with. I guess I'll spend the rest of my day looking for this damn thing. <laughs> there it is. A few seconds later, I'm holding that putter up to his Sports Illustrated cover photo. Go match it up and see if for real. Yeah, let's go see. There it is. Which of your three US Open championships is your favorite? Impossible answer. <laughs> the three U.S. Opens that I fortunately was able to win, uh, the first one always was at Wingfoot, and it was so difficult. It was, uh, that was course over man. It was matter over mind. The 74 U.S. Open is referred to as the massacre at Wingfoot because of the incredibly tough conditions. It was really, really hard. Getting to the top of that is just kind of like I survived. Survived he did. He won by two strokes with a final score of seven over par. Hale's next U.S. Open win came five years later at Inverness where he became the 14th player to win the U.S. Open more than once. A much different golf course. Five years later, different time in my life. That was very rewarding because I have multiple majors now. He never admitted it to us, but I think his third U.S. Open's got to be his favorite. He won the 1990 U.S. Open at age 45. He's still to this day the oldest guy to win it, and he hadn't won a tournament for five years leading up to it. I sat down in the winter of 1989 with a legal pad and just got some paper out, and I put down tournaments that I'd won. What did I remember about winning? Uh, tempo. Put another. Quiet hands. Was my posture right? Was I literally aligning myself right? And I started thinking about the things that were simple, little things, but I got to thinking like a player again. And so when we got to the open, I could really feel it coming back. We can all take something from Hale's notepad, but not even he could write a better script for the back nine that Sunday. It started on the 11th tee. I looked at the leaderboard on the 11th tee, and I was one shot out of the top 15. So I went out and hit two good shots on the 11th hole, hit it close, made a birdie. And I birdied 12, I birdied 13, I birdied 14. So now I've Whipped off four birdies in a row, and I've gone from out of the top 15, now I'm one back. Par 15, 16, 17. That's why the big 45 foot putt at 18 was so huge. Not only was it a huge putt, but it was just a huge situation. Now did I think it was going to win outright? Never, never did. But just the thrill of doing what I was able to do, and capping it off with this big long putt, and we had our 19 hole playoff the next day. It was a storybook kind of ending. These are the two-third size replicas of the Open Trophy. We got these made. All they give oh, you is the little coin they thing. They just give you the That's coin. That's all they give you. And you get to keep the Open Trophy for, they say a year, but by the time they get it to you and you have to give it back, it's about eight months. Gotcha, okay. From the PGA Tour, he graduated to the Champions Tour, where he stopped collecting coins and started building more trophy cases. Hale is the most dominant player in Champions Tour history. To this day, his 45 victories on the Champions Tour is the most all time. At the date of this filming, Bernhard Langer is the only player currently even within sniffing of that record with 40 wins. Uh, before we finished editing this piece though, Bernhard did win another one. If Bernhard doesn't catch him, most likely nobody ever will. We have the highest respect for each other. You know, we both had fantastic careers. There's no animosity or any of that. And we yeah. wish each other the best and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Is there anybody that's gonna, that really is gonna have the career that you and Bernhard have had on the Champions Tour? And I ask that, as you, as you well know, they're making so much money down there on the PGA Tour. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's some great players. Ernie Els has come out this year. Phil Mickelson's going to be close. Jim Furyk's getting close. So we've really got some good players out there. But will they be inspired enough to play? Because, as you mentioned, there's, they've got a lot of money. Their bank account has a lot of numbers in it. Now, if they want to compete and love the game, they'll play. If they're going to do it for money, they probably won't. It's hard for me to think we're going to see Phil Mickelson every week out there and you know let alone tiger and 
even a, a Spieth and Fowler for that matter. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting that, that I feel like that landscape is going to look different. That's what I mean. It has to be a, a heartfelt commitment to do it and something that you enjoy so much that you want to stay with it. But it has to come from within. Hale has heart. He always seemed to play his best on the hard courses and owns one of the longest cuts made streaks in PGA Tour history, finishing in the money 86 straight events from 1975 to 1978. Only Byron Nelson, Jack Nicklaus, and Tiger Woods have longer streaks. How did you do it? I didn't start playing the game of golf because I didn't think I was going to succeed. I started playing because I knew I would succeed, but I knew I had a lot to learn. Every time I hit the golf course, Every day to this day, I want to learn something. I didn't have a teacher. I'd never had a lesson. To this day as I'm sitting here, I've never had a lesson. But I've been observant, and I looked at the best players. Nicholas, Palmer, Player, Tom Watson, Johnny Miller. How do you control your nerves? How do you control yourself? I have found I had to modulate my emotions. I found that, okay, once I've hit the drive, I think my thoughts, whatever they may be, but once I got within 50 yards of the ball, I started gathering them up. So the time I got over my ball, I was back in the moment. So I, I kind of trained myself to peak in Valley. And I wanted to peak at the time of the shot. The best that ever played it controlled those emotions, their nerves, their excitement, their anxieties, their apprehension, their confidence, they, they controlled it. Why is golf the best game in the world? Because you're accountable to yourself. You can't lay it off on somebody else. Well, they hit the bad shot, or we didn't make the right decision. No, you didn't make the right decision. It wasn't anything else. It was you. I don't care who you are. You still have to account to yours truly. And if you can't do that, then you're fooling yourself and you won't succeed. Everybody has to find themselves in the game of golf. That's the thing I like is that you never play the same round of golf. You never hit the same shot twice. No. Hale, I don't know when I'll come down from this moment. This has been quite the experience <laughs> to come hang out with you a little bit and spend some time and get shown all the trophies and hear some of the great stories. Thank you again for spending uh, some thank time Thank you. With us. I'm glad you're here. I, I love sharing these moments about some of the great people that I've been able to meet through this wonderful game. And the trophy is just a reminder of those times and people that uh, have blessed my life. We could camp out and stay here for days. This is amazing. <laughs> If you'd like to see the entirety of our interview with Hale Irwin, visit BreakingPar.net. It's worth a watch.